The world lost an amazing person on the night of Christmas 2016. Well, at least two amazing people, but this video isn't about George Michael. I would like to talk a little bit about Vera Rubin, an astrophysicist who published the first groundbreaking evidence of dark matter when she figured out why entire galaxies may be able to spin around so quickly without flinging all of their stars into space. Rubin's death at the age of 88 is tragic not just because the world has lost an incredibly sharp and insightful mind, but also because it puts an end to the hopes of astrophysicists and science lovers everywhere that Rubin might finally win a Nobel Prize in physics. They're not awarded posthumously, so they may very well continue their incredible streak of 53 years without awarding a Nobel Prize in physics to a woman. In fact, there are more people with Nobel Prizes named Peter than who are women. I mean, it's not entirely surprising considering that men named Peter weren't oppressed for several millennia and only allowed to formally study the sciences in the past hundred years or so. But the discovery of dark matter is so fundamental to the study of astrophysics that it's stupefying that even Vera Rubin has gone so many years without recognition. I mean, not to take anything away from the winner from a few years ago, blue LEDs, my Christmas tree does look great this year, but this is a really huge oversight that now can never be corrected, at least by the Nobel Prizes. For her part, Rubin was actually pretty cool about being repeatedly snubbed for the prize despite being a favorite since the 1980s. She told Discovery Magazine in 1990, my numbers mean more to me than my name. If astronomers are still using my data years from now, that's my greatest compliment. Around that same time, she also gave a very long and fascinating interview about her life to Alan Lightman for the American Institute of Physics, which you can read in full. There's a link over on my Patreon, and I highly recommend reading it because it's fascinating, and there are some things in there that weren't originally made public. They were only made available in the archives. For instance, Lightman asks Rubin to describe the experience of delivering her thesis at Cornell uh, about the rotation of galaxies. And off the record, but available in the archives, she explains how a male colleague first tried to put another man's name on her thesis, uh, even though that man had nothing to do with it, and then tried to deliver the thesis himself because he said that there's, she obviously couldn't do it because she was going to give birth a few weeks prior to the meeting. The interview is completely incredible. You have to go read it. But basically, she declined all that, and she went ahead and gave the talk, uh, despite nursing a baby. She had just given birth a few weeks prior. Um, she wasn't. I don't think she was actually nursing the baby during the talk, but still, pretty impressive. That interview is also fascinating because she mentions that it never occurred to her that a woman couldn't be an astronomer because, even though it was, you know, incredibly rare, because she admired a woman named Maria Mitchell. And Lightman, uh, the interviewer, doesn't know who Mitchell is, for which Rubin admonishes him, because Rubin really wanted Mitchell to be as famous as Ben Franklin and made it part of her goal to spread the word about Mitchell whenever she could. Mitchell was the first American female astronomer. Um, she worked in the late 19th century, and she was also the first professor of ast astronomy at Vassar College, which is why Rubin chose to study there. As an aside, Mitchell was also an outspoken opponent of slavery and a suffragist who co-founded the American Association for the Advancement of Women, so an all-around badass. Vera Rubin's history really speaks to the power of remembering and honoring female scientists who would otherwise be forgotten. Fame may be fleeting, but a little fame might help the next generation of astrophysicists to be inspired. And as I've talked about plenty of times, research shows us that we're more likely to feel that we belong in a place and pursue certain goals if we see people we identify with in those places and doing those things. So Vera Rubin may never get a Nobel Prize, but I really hope she does achieve the fame necessary at least to continue inspiring little girls to look up at the stars and wonder what's out there.